Elizabeth Street, Little Italy. Hangs with his pals, yeah, that's where he'll be. It's Vinny, a friend of mine. Stand up guy from the Lower East Side. Take it from me, he's one of a kind. It's Vinny, Velotar. I always like to introduce my host, Mariana. Good evening, everyone. Hello, Vinny. I don't know what I'd do without Mariana. I don't know what you would do without me That's either. Right. Yeah, right. There you go. <laughs> oh, man. But tonight is a different service. We don't have it is. any entertainers, any entertainers on the show tonight. Because a lot of people have been calling in and emailing us and emailing Mariana, emailing me. And wanting to know is something wrong? You forgot your microphone. Oh, is that mine? Yes. That's yours. How'd it get off? I don't know. <laughs> it just slipped off. Was that talking about this microphone? I guess you were. Yes, How'd it come off of me? I don't know. Okay. Well, listen, you were already in front of the camera. Might as well come back on it again. <laughs> so anyway, I don't even know what else it is. Where's the microphone? Did you get it? There it is. Just put it right there. I have no idea. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen, we have a technical yeah. difficulty here. I, I, I don't know how it came off to me. I don't know. But anyway, so we have people emailing me, yes. emailing Mariana, yep. wanting to know different questions about the two of us. So we decided to do a show tonight, mm -hmm. just topics. Just you and I. There you go. Well, so you know what, I'll let you start off. Yeah, one quick thing, which I'm sure a lot of people are trying to figure out, what's up with these glasses? What's okay. going on with you, okay. Vinny? Okay, well... You know, I had them on last week also. You did? Well, I have, I'm having a problem with my left eye. You know, I'm okay. starting to see very blurry. I'm, my right eye is okay, but my left eye is just very blurry. So I went to um, my eye doctor and all right, that. Right, right. And they'd done several exams, and um, they told me that they're going to set up an appointment for me to go have a cataract done. Really? Okay, so that's so that should happen, hopefully, within uh, actually where they wanted to send me. Uh -huh. I don't want to go there. It's too far away, and it's way up on the Upper East Side. So I figured, and then they said we'll set up an appointment for you for about two or three months from there. Two or three months. That's long. So I figured, you know what? I'm going to go to Eye and Ear on okay. 14th Street. Okay. And uh, so I did, and I have to go back again Thursday. All right. And next Thursday. And then they'll set up an appointment for me to have a cataract done. And why is it? Do you know what the... Why is what? Why do you need the cataract surgery? What's going on? Because I can't on? see. My eyes very blurry. Yeah, but why can't you see? What's going on? I have no idea. Maybe it's because of diabetes. I have oh, no so idea. Oh, so they didn't tell you the reason why? As far as why you can't see? No. No. No, they said it could be because of diabetes. Oh, I see. But... Let me see. Wait up. My vision, my vision <laughs> just came back. It's, it's 2020. <laughs> Unbelievable. Oh okay. But the reason why I have the glasses on, because that light, and, and for some reason, the, during the daytime, the sunlight, when it's too bright out there, it seems to be just pounding on my face. Yeah, and it's and straining it's, the and eyes. It's, and it's straining. Yeah. And I have to have it done fast because, the you know, without, when I don't use the glasses, I'm putting strains on my right eye to try to see what I'm looking at. Yeah. And by the time they do this, this one's going to have to be done. Of course. You know, so. Well, hopefully it'll get done sooner than later. Yeah, well, I hope so. Yeah, well, I'm, you know, I'd like to get it done right away. But from what I understand, it's an in and out procedure. Okay. You know, like you go in, they do it in one day. They put a bandage or a patch over your eye right. for a day. Right. To protect it. Something yeah. like that, you know. And then it should be okay. Then I'll be able to see. <laughs> I'll be able oh to see. Boy. I'll be able to see a lot more. I don't know if I want to be a witness to that. <laughs> I was seeing okay to begin with. And you're gonna uh, have X-ray vision. There you go. <laughs> oh wait, I got. Oh, well, you're right. You know what my wife said. Yeah. My wife said, I have. I'm having this problem because I keep looking at all the girls. Ah. Uh, well, maybe. I don't Maybe think, that's your issue. I don't, you know, I, I pay no attention to it anyway, because I don't believe it is Friday the 13th stuff. 
you know. Who but knows? anyway, I have some questions I want to ask you. Do. Now, when, how, when, and how did you get involved in the entertainment business? Oh boy. So that was a long time ago. When I was two or three, I remember that I used to dance around the house. Two or three. Two or three. Oh. oh. I used to oh, dance okay. around the house, yeah. sing around the house, and my grandmother Olga would always come over, and she told my mom. What's her name? Olga. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Olga Vasquez. Okay. And she and I'm sure she's watching right now, so she's gonna get a hoot that we okay. that you just said Olga. So she would always see me dancing and singing and performing for her. So she told my mom, You have to put this girl in dance classes. So she was the one that started it all. She told my mom, put her in dance classes. I think my first dance class was called Mother and Me Ballet. So I took a class with my mom. Okay. That led for me to take on tap lessons. So I took tap lessons, and then I went to performing arts elementary and middle school. Then I went to a performing arts high school. Then I came to New York City. And in New York City is when I decided to go to Fordham University with Alvin Ailey, where I started training in dance and also getting my academic education. And then I started dancing professionally ever since. And of course, with everything that's happened, pursuing my acting career and here with you. So I started as a very little girl dancing in my room, and then all of a sudden I'm well, now there. There you go. There yeah. you go. Wow, yeah. that's really nice. Yeah. Okay, and uh, Vinny, let's, yeah. Well, now that we spoke about my history just a little bit, yeah. What about you? I know. I mean, most of our viewers know that you've been in what 60 plus odd films. You talk about your former projects, amazing projects, and then the future projects that you have currently. But what? was your first acting gig. How did you get involved in oh, acting? Oh, God, I happened to be at the right place at the wrong time. <laughs> Wait, right I happened place. to be at the right place at the right time. Yeah, yeah. And, um, but you know, I, I don't even want to go back that far because okay. if I did it, people would really know how old I am. But it, it's been many years. But my first big role yeah. where everybody now recognizes me is, was Casino, right. but then everything else came after that, like um, Coffee and Cigarettes, Find Me Guilty with Vin Diesel, Ghost Dog with Forrest Whitaker, mm. uh, Sopranos, right. and um, it just goes on and on and on. Yeah, but what was the first thing? Do you remember the first? <laughs> the, I really want to know the first job that you ever did professionally as an actor. Uh, well, one of them was... Um, French Connection. Okay. French Connection. I only had two words to say in that movie. I see. And that put me right in the union. I was a sanitation worker. Uh -huh. And those two words was, oh shit. Really? Uh, <laughs> appropriate. <yeah>. Very appropriate. <laughs> you know, so, uh, and the guy says, wow. Well, not, not, not for the words that I said. Yeah. But for what I had to do, which only took me not even five minutes to do it. He said, that was very good. What kind of work have you done before? I have been doing a lot of work. You just never recognized me. Meanwhile, I never did nothing, mm. you know? But that's where it all started. That's where it started. Then it, you know, job after job after job. Yeah. I worked some extra work. But because of, I guess, my personality, my look, mm -hmm. I started getting roles in independent films, too. Right. Not principal roles. We start off with some extra work, as you know, being a wise guy mm -hmm. or being around wise guys. I would. They would always feature me right up front, mm -hmm. and I guess they started to like me. And then the next thing you know is. Well, I think you were around at the perfect time because at that time it was the era of all the Italian movies, oh, the tell Italian me about it. oh, yeah. movies. So oh, that's yeah. why it just like your career just soared. Oh yeah, it so yeah, it, sure it did. did. <laughs> it sure it did. did very quickly. Yeah, it did. And uh, I met some very interesting people sure on did. the way up, yeah. and I'm still meeting them, you know. I don't think it ever ends for you. It doesn't. Mm -hmm. It doesn't. And we had our oh, Charles Dutton. Dutton on the show. I know. Matter of fact, he even called me up today You're kidding. because I sent them a tape of the show. Oh, you did. And uh, uh, he says, "How's everybody? How's your host?" Oh, he's such you know? a such a sweet and, guy. Uh, and then I worked with him in. Philadelphia, right, you right. Know, a couple we, weeks back. Yeah, a couple of weeks ago, we did a film, independent film, which I'm involved in. I play the uh, mayor of Philadelphia. Very yeah. appropriate as well. <laughs> there you go. All right, listen, if I could play a mafia guy and then I got me out of that role and I played uh, a mayor, mm -hmm. and then in one movie, 
called the last days of limbo. Yeah. I played a bishop. You know. Well, you're all over the spectrum. There you go. Yeah. Well, that's that's great. that is great. That is I did not appreciate you. Now, where did you perform as a dancer? Well, speaking of all over the spectrum, so I grew up in Miami. So while I was in Miami, I attended New World School of the Arts, which is, was a performing arts high school. During that time, I was also on a live entertainment variety show called Sao Gigante. And okay. I don't know, it was, it's on Univision. It's actually still a show on Univision right now. So I was one of their core dancers. And when I came to New York, when I was attending Fordham University, I studied abroad. So I danced in Spain for a full summer in what part of Spain? Burgos. Okay. So we were the company I was dancing with was the um, Compañía Contemporánea de Burgos. Say what? <laughs> Compañía Contemporánea de oh. Burgos, oh, contemporary yeah. dance company oh. of Burgos, Spain. Okay. So I danced with them, but we also traveled around and we toured to Soria and Salamanca, which it was one of. I think one of the most amazing experiences I've had, to not only be able to dance with a professional company while I was still in school, but in Spain. And I mean, the Europeans think so so highly of artists, so they were so appreciative of our work, which was just astounding. Wow. I also danced in Beijing, China, which I told you, I think I told you yeah. this, with a company called Jennifer Muller The Works. Right after they did the Olympics, they had created this new theater, state-of-the-art theater, and we were the second company ever to perform in this theater in Beijing, which was amazing. And as far as... As far as I'm concerned, you're a big star. <laughs> and as far as in the city, I've performed at Lincoln Center with the New York City Opera. I've, uh, I actually got a contract with the Metropolitan Opera House, which I couldn't fulfill when I got injured. Um, I've performed at Summer Stage in Central Park. Do you know Summer Stage? It's in Not Central really. Park, yeah. Okay. Fire Island, the Hamptons. I mean, I've been all over. I had a wonderful You're career a big as, star. A, You're as a, big a dancer. Star. You're yeah. a star in my eyes, you know that. Thank you, Vinny. You saw it in me, that's why you chose me. Uh, oh, you know, hey. Um, well, speaking of big stars, yeah. You had a very dear friend of yours pass away recently, oh, Joe yeah. Regano. Oh, Joe Regano. Yeah. That's, that's my boy. Matter of fact, I even brought a picture of him. Oh, you do? You have and one. And Joe Regano was in the movie right Casino yeah. Yeah. with me. And that's the guy in the center. In the center. If we get a close-up Yeah, up he got that. it. Richard got that one. Yeah. That's him in the center. Oh. And uh, this person right here uh -huh. is... Remo, he was the head of the family in Kansas City, and then I'm over here. And I played um, oh, Artie Piscano. Yeah. Sometimes you know you do so many movies, forget who the hell you're playing. So that's one. And then I got some other pictures I want to show. Oh yeah. And then I, I have uh, have another picture of. Um, this is a picture of Robert De Niro in the center as George incredible. Washington on the second if issue of George Magazine. Ah. And here I am on one side, yeah, on his left. and Joe Regano is on the other side. That was in the second issue of uh, George Magazine. Okay. And, and you Performed. You did performed. You did several movies. You shot several movies with Joe Regano. Right? Oh yeah, I've done so much stuff with, with Joe Regano. I've done ESPN commercials. The uh, Wise Guy Show, right? The, the Wise Guy yeah. Show. Mm -hmm. um, we've done a lot of appearances, you know, all around the all around the country. Um, I want to I can't. I'm not. I've done about five or six movies with him. I can't even think right now. Incredible. You know, I got. Just a couple of other pictures I just okay. want to show you. Yeah. I got a picture. Here's another guy that I worked with when I was in. Uh, I'm not in this picture, but that's James Gandolfini in the middle. Yeah. And on this side, oh wait, that's on the, the other, other side. side. Yeah. On the <laughs> other side, right there, that's my friend Leo Casino. And he's in the audience he's with us. He's in the audience tonight. Yep, yeah. he's Welcome in the audience to tonight. And this is his friend Joe. And uh, James Gandolfini, he happened to pass away. The same day that I went on vacation, huh. uh, let me just show you one other picture, the last picture. Okay. And this is another picture of um, Leo. Leo, let's see, is right there. 
Let's see. Yeah, Did I get yeah. my finger on that one? <laughs> Is it on the right one there? Yes, right here. Okay, yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, and that was for, uh, I think, Vogue magazine. Vogue magazine, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> right. I got him into that one. I got look at I, him carrying a beautiful lady. Yeah. <laughs> I was supposed to be doing that. If I would have known. Wait, the gonna... carrying or the lying down? <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> Which one of <coughs> And But unfortunately, when I, the minute I got to uh, Jamaica, yeah. I made a call to New York to, to see to if I had any messages. Right. <coughs> Excuse me. And I found out <laughs> that just hours before the James L. Delfini had died in his hotel oh in Italy, and his son found him. And it was just too costly for me to, to go back. Right. You know, and I only had like, um, uh, I think it was 10 days there. So for me to go back, I have to stay for days to come back, leave my family there, would have been too much. Yeah. So I just sent a whole bunch of flowers. Of you know. And but um, you, Oh, right. sorry, go ahead. I'm sorry, no, go ahead. No, but you were able to attend Joe Regano's funeral. You even spoke Joe at his Regano's, funeral, right? If you want to know something about Joe Regano's funeral, you know, Joe Regano had a raspy voice. Yeah. And I he never, was known I, for his raspy voice. He was known for his that, yeah. that, right. Now, I never goofed on him, but that, that was because he had throat cancer. But he was oh, a survivor boy. of throat cancer for 40 years. Then all of a sudden, it came back. Oh. Then... He wound up on a dialysis machine. Oh then he wound up where he couldn't talk anymore. Had to put a hole in his throat so that he could talk. Then he couldn't swallow and eat. Had to put a hole in his stomach so that they could feed him. And uh, he was just living on the machines. And uh, I met Joe exactly 20 years ago, 1994, when they were filming the Casino. Oh, I see. And that's when I met him. Okay. And we became very good friends. And I'll tell you something. I, I never, when I imitated him, I didn't do it to goof on him. We did it as fun, and he even enjoyed it too. <laughs> and um, but I'll tell you something. I know this is going to sound not going to sound right, and it's not going to be believable. But when I walked over to his casket, and I was by myself looking at him, I said, "Joe, you, you know, I'm going to miss you a lot. You were a very good friend." And um, I says, you know, I'm not going to, I remember all the good times that we've had together, and uh -oh. I said, I don't know what I'm going to do without you. You're going to be gone, but you're not going to be forgotten. Then I said, I'm going to miss you, Joe. I you did an did? imitation. I did an imitation. Oh. I said, I'm going to miss you, Joe. Oh. And I know that it's probably didn't happen. Maybe it was just my imagination. But when I was looking at him, I could have swore he did this. <laughs> and then it went back. I could have swallowed. He looked at me, came out like a little grin, and went back. I'm sure it was all my imagination. Hey, but you felt it. But he was I, yeah, wood, and I, uh, and yeah, and I, uh, I miss him quite a bit. I'm sure you do. And let me see, let me see, uh, let me see. What is it? Oh, wait. It's, yeah, yeah. No, 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 you oh, go wait. ahead. It's your oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> and what's the best advice that you think I've ever given you? You'd be surprised. I don't think you know this, and I've never told you this. Uh oh. So. Are you gonna embarrass me? No, not really. Oh. Okay. <laughs> well, we'll see. Okay. So I don't know if you remember this. After the first show that I shot with you, when I was actually I was here sitting down with Carissa Clark and with yourself, okay. you called me the following week. I was actually driving back from Boston with my husband because we just celebrated our anniversary. Okay. You called me and left me a message. And you said, you looked great on camera, but you need to speak more. You weren't saying much. And I immediately took it as an insult. I'm like, what do you mean? I was trying to say as much as I could at the time yeah. and trying to put my word in edgewise. Yeah. And then I kept on thinking to myself, well, instead of taking it as a critique, why not start researching all the guests and have as much ample information as I can and so I can speak my mind, even though I don't want to give my own perspective. And so from that day on, I was like, well, I'm going to show Vinny that I'm going to speak in every single show. And see, the little thing you said, instead of taking it as a critique, I decided to expand on that and actually research every guest. And even though, you know, we might not know what we're going to say on the live show, but at least I have enough information to make it work. And so not only go. that, you have done 
You've been with me over a year. I have. A year and a couple of months. Yeah. And um, you've you've been doing a beautiful job. Thanks, Everybody me. loves you. So do I. And um, you're fabulous on the show. You, be, you call the people up, you know, before they get here and find out more about them. And I honestly, I don't know, it's something that I think I always wanted to do, but never really thought I would get the opportunity to do. So I think this happened at the right time in my life. And when I auditioned, how many girls to get you? I think you had like about 10 or yeah. so that came to the initial audition, to the meet and greet, when right. you just wanted to meet them, to see right. their personalities. Right. I was gonna say feel them out. Not in that way, <laughs> just get a sense of who they are, yeah. Yeah, because the half of them stand there like mannequins. Well, yeah. yeah. I mean, especially for something like this, you have to have some sort of charisma. You have to have the personality. You have to have the chemistry with the yeah. person you're co-hosting with. You think with. we have chemistry? Absolutely. Oh, we have a, a great dynamic. Oh, line. without a doubt. <laughs> I think the audience, hopefully, they think so, yeah, too. Yeah, they do. They do. <laughs> See, oh, there I, you go. I get a lot of emails, oh. you know. Yeah. I get people, somebody, I, I got an email. Somebody said, is that your wife? Oh, boy. We don't have that type of chemistry. No, 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 no. I didn't. I know that. No. But someone said, "Is that your wife or is that your girlfriend or something?" Okay. Like that? I don't remember. I just went by. I don't That's want so my funny. wife to see because my wife's gonna say, "What the hell's going on over here?" Uh -oh. So I deleted that one right away. You know. And uh, but you know you're right. And uh, let's see. Well, no. Um, changing things up a little bit. I know you. There were a couple of things that you wanted to discuss tonight. Yeah. And one of the things you really wanted to touch upon was legalizing marijuana and your thoughts and perspective uh, on that. So legalizing marijuana. <laughs> here we That's go. A... Here we go on this. I don't think they should. Okay. I think that if anybody gets caught with marijuana, give them a fine. But legalizing it. You want to know something? There's, we got enough nuts in New York already. Enough crazy people. People be smoking it on there. If you legalize it, people be coming out of their office building during, yes. the, during the daytime on a break and be smoking the joints. They'll be walking back into work. Uh, train conductors smoking it. Who knows what they? Who? who I don't. I don't. I don't think they should legalize it now. No. no. Not well, at all. I definitely agree with you as far as the widespread abuse of yeah. marijuana and using it for recreational purposes. But as far as medical marijuana, yeah. I do think they should pass it. Because a lot of people do have the severe ailments that they do need this type of drug that could help them. In that case, I do. And I think New York is almost going to become the sec 22nd state in the country to yeah. legalize medical marijuana, but the Senate, Senate well, still has done Well, maybe medical ma marijuana. Yes. In that respect, I do disagree with you, but I do agree about. Okay, well, yeah. I, maybe I could go along with that yeah. one. As long as it's approved by doctors, not some doctor you give a $100 no, under no, no, the no, table, no. and he writes you out a prescription. No. You know? Right. And if that's going to happen, and I'm sure it will, right. you're going to get doctors that are going to, hey, listen, it's $500 under the table. They say, well, the guy's half wacky. You know, if he smokes a joint, he'll be okay. That's right. Why, pres prescription. Yeah, that's why I think it's taking so long for the Senate to decide and to do the full vote. I don't think they should legalize. Because I, they I, have to make all the legislation has to be as restrictive as possible, so it w that won't happen. Yeah. But how can Somebody you gets caught with a joint, something like that. Right. I'm not saying lock them up. No, don't lock them up. No. You know, because when you put a prisoner in jail, mm -hmm. believe it or not, it costs a ballpark figure about thirty-seven thousand dollars a year per prisoner. Wow. And it's like a revolving door. Of course. They go in jail, say you get a, you get a guy that gets caught with four or five pounds of pot. They give him a year in jail. Maybe this guy never had what he's gonna get in jail. He goes to jail, they get TVs in their room, they get three square meals a day, they can write letters, they go to comments that week. They get they they get they, they got a roof over there. Right. They might not have had that outside, so they don't see their girlfriend if they had one, or whatever. Or they come and visit. It's like a revolving door. They go in and they come right back out, yeah. do the same thing all over again. The law's got to be changed, and don't legalize marijuana. That's my opinion. You know. And here comes the guy with the figure. We have three minutes. <laughs> oh my gosh. Man. <laughs> uh, when your mother was here yeah. uh, for, for one of the shows, she mentioned that she's a school teacher. Yes. Uh, what are some of the issues that 
Um, she is uh, dealing with yeah. currently right now. Well, well I'll, I'll make this really brief. So my mom is a kindergarten teacher in Dade County in Miami, Florida. And she teaches not only kindergarten, but also special education students. So the problem right now is that they're making all these tests mandatory. For instance, kindergarten students are taking SATs now. D did you ever take what? SATs? Do you know what SATs no, are? No. SATs, when I was growing up, was a test, a standardized test that only juniors and maybe sophomores in high school would take. And it was a prerequisite for college. Now we have kindergarten. People, little kids who are five and six years old taking this test. So now it's like. Well, they didn't give it to me. Yeah. I know. So now these poor kids, instead of being having a well-rounded education, they're now getting rid of music in the classroom, they're getting rid of the arts in the classroom, and now they're just focusing on these standardized tests. And the teachers are not being judged by that. So it's something that's very difficult to deal with. But my mom is making it work, but well, it's just hey, listen, it's tough. They think that that's going to make the kids a little bit smarter or educate I mean, them a little faster. Yeah. I don't know. I, I just hope that... Because kindergarten ain't really not it's just hanging out all day long. I, not anymore. That's the problem. Instead of getting this, like, the first step into education, they're now getting bombarded with all this. I, maybe it might be too much knowledge, especially for those special ed students or the people that are just coming into so the you country. Think? You think, um, I think it's too much. And especially because now they're leaving out music and the arts and everything that really should influence the young kids. Summer's finally here. <laughs> and what are some of your favorite things? Summer's finally here. What are the favorite things um, that you can do in the city? Well, I know what your favorite thing is. You were telling me about this earlier, about, well, not only the San Gennaro Feast, yeah. but you're telling me that I didn't know this, that Little Italy closes down its roads from 6 p.m. Yeah, what did you that's say? Right. 6 p.m. They on close Friday? it down from 6 p.m. on a Friday yeah. till midnight on a Saturday. Okay. The streets are closed. Which is and incredible. on Sunday, the streets are also closed, but up until 10 o'clock at night. Okay. So it, it's all weekend long from Memorial, Memorial Day to Labor Day. Yeah. And, um, and it's so nice. You know, everybody's out on the street. I've been living here for 13 years, and I had no idea this happens. So no. all these are tours that are coming into if, the city. If you were involved with Vinny, you would have known. <laughs> well, now I know. That's See? amazing. Yeah. Well, I hear the music. Is that our music? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, but anyway, I just want to thank everybody for coming in tonight. Yeah, thank you to our lovely audience. It's one of a kind. It's Vinny. Velotar.